How's it going, Gearheads? Dave, aka Fireball, coming at you with another edition of Gearholics. I'm flying solo tonight because I'm going to be doing a, another product deep dive here on a system that is not brand new, but is. And we are going to be talking about Zen Bivy and their light bed and ultra light bed systems today. So the reason why I say that they're not new is because they've had this system out for at least a few years now, but it, it has been really clunky and pretty expensive. So not really great for backpacking, but um, definitely super plush for car car camping. So let's just dive right into it tonight here. Um, the reason why I wanted to do a dedicated Gearholics cast on this one is because there's a lot to unpack with this system that I, I thought would just kind of like bleed over beyond like a five to 10 minute speculation video. So um, let's just unpack each one of these one by one here. And then at the end, I'll circle back around and let you, my, let you know my final thoughts and whether or not this is a worthy buy and something that you should consider, particularly for your backpacking kit. So again, today we're going to be focusing on uh, probably both their light and ultra light options. As of the date of this recording, they have their ultra light option for their pad available for purchase, but not for, I think, the rest of the system. It still says coming soon on their site, but you can go, go ahead and purchase their light system, which is a little bit heavier than the ultra light system. So Let's just uh, present my screen here and show you what I'm talking about. Okay, I'm going to start first here with their pillow system. And um, you have to think of this as a complete system that they have here. It is, um, they have a pillow, they have a sheet, they have a quilt that clips into the sheet, and all of that goes on top of one of their pads here. Now, you don't necessarily have to buy the entire system together here, and I don't think that you uh, necessarily need to buy all of the pieces in order for it to work as seamlessly as possible. So, so diving into each one of these here first, I'm going to get the negative out of the way first. Um, if you've been following my channel for any length of period of time here, you know that I'm not a fan of inflatable pillows, and that's what this is here. It's showing you all the different combos and then put together. So they have a pillow cover, they have an inflatable style pillow right here, and then they have, I think it's a down topper on top of that. Now, this isn't new. A lot of people have been doing this um, sort of like on their own. They're probably just the first to kind of like put it all together in a neat package here. So as you can see, it all kind of nests together. They have a large version. They have a regular version. I think $65 and $70 is kind of expensive for what you get. That's going to be a common theme for everything that I'm going to be talking about tonight. But again, here it is, separate pillowcase. You got a bladder and then you have a down pillow topper. So the air bladder goes down below and then the pillow topper goes up top and then you throw that pillow cover over it. The only thing that kind of that they've done to kind of integrate it into their system here is they added this clip right here which clips to the top portion of the hood. Now, uh, again, is this thing worth it? Not really. You can probably figure out how to do this yourself if you wanted to mimic this um, and probably at a cheaper price. So again, you might MacGyver it a little bit here, um, but is it worth it really to get their pillow? I don't think so. Especially like the only thing that's like holding it in is a clip. I think the hood does a decent enough job of keeping the pillow in anyway. So I don't think that the clip is 100% necessary here, but you can see a total weight here of 6.1 for the small and then 8.3 for the large. And there there's some of the other dimensions there. All right. Uh, I'm not a fan of the air bladder pillow. So, you know, I've tried the Nemo Philo with the foam topper as well, and it just hasn't worked out well for me. So um, if you're not a fan of those either, then I definitely recommend a compressible pillow, either by like REI or Thermarest is my go-to. But let's dive into the other stuff real quick. Um, I'm going to go to the all beds here first to show you what I'm talking about. So they have their original, which is the core bed here on the right. And then their newer stuff here is the light bed. It kind of goes in succession, like all the way to the right here is super heavy. And then they have the light bed, which is lighter. And then the ultra light bed here, which as you can probably guess is the most expensive here. I like this box that they showed right here because it kind of gives you some quick stats at a glance, um, particular for the ultra light, the first two lines, the ultra light bed. And then the light bed here is what we're going to be looking at. The biggest difference is here, as you can see, is they're using like a 20D uh, inner lining as well as an outer shell for the light bed versus a 10D 
70, right? A little bit thinner of a material there. They're also using a higher fill power for the ultra light bed system. Compare the light bed 800 versus 900 fill. Um, and then they also have a synthetic option for the light, but not for the ultra light. So that makes sense. Um, anything else here? This is kind of showing you their. This is kind of showing you their system here. They have zippers, but then they also have color coded clips. That's how you keep the um, the system, the the quilt onto the uh, sheet, which is also onto the pad here. I also want to talk real quickly about this feature here for the fast foot box, which is supposed to. It's supposedly. Uh, enables you to get your feet out a little bit more or vent out your feet a little bit more. If you have the convertible quilt, which is this right one uh, over here, th that's a different option. The one on the left here, the fast foot box is still more enclosed and they have a couple of the additional clips to close that out. But you see it doesn't completely unfurl like the convertible one does. So a couple of different options depending on which one you know suits your needs the best here. So uh, what I'm going to go for first is let's look at... Hmm. I think the rest of it kind of goes all together here. So let's look at the light bed, something that you can actually pick up today. And I don't know when this is dropping on the channel. So maybe the ultralight version is going to be out. But if you were to get the smallest options for the light bed, check this out. It's really not that bad. So the lining uh, or the liner, the top, the top liner here, which is the uninsulated version, as well as the like smaller version of the quilt. Um, all together is 23.1 ounces. Now they have a couple of different options here. Again, like I had mentioned for you to choose from a um, couple of different degree ratings, right? 25 and 10 degree. And the prices here for the light system really aren't that bad. They're kind of competitive. 259 bucks for a regular size with an 800 fill for a 25 degree um, rated bag really isn't that bad. Now, another question you might be thinking of is, is this for a comfort rating of 25 or is that the extreme version? I'm not 100% sure on that. I'm going to guess that it is for more of the extreme version and not total comfort. Um, and you can see here $309 for the 10 degree version. Um, I'm, at, I'm at five foot eight. I usually go with a large version. Another thing that they're not really showing you here, which I'm a little bit bummed on. Maybe they have it under the full details. Is I'm trying to find what, like what the lengths are on these here. Oh, here we go. Quilt dimensions. So for the regular 78 by 54, 54 isn't bad. Um, 58 is definitely better. Uh, 78 inch length actually really isn't that bad for my five foot eight frame. If you wanted to come up a little bit higher over your head, definitely go for the large. And then here are the weights here for the 25 degree. You got only 20 ounces for their regular version. So for your standard size human being, I think that the regular should do you just fine. They have a couple of different colors here too. They got a red and black, they got a blue and black, and they got a green and black or like an olive and black style. So let's head back here and show you. They also have the convertible here, which is a square. can kind of, you know, completely open that foot box there. And in this version, not in the light quilt, but in the convertible, they also have a 40 degree synthetic, which is even uh, cheaper. So really good to see those different options. One thing to note here is that the convertible is a little bit more expensive than just the light quilt. So you're paying for a little bit more versatility. It's 20 bucks more, 279 versus 259. Over to the sheet now for the light sheet. They have an uninsulated, a 25 degree down, insulated and a 10 degree down. I'm not sure if you could see that with the pictures here, but for the 10 and 25 degree, they just have some insulation here at the top in the hood versus like nothing really here in the uninsulated version. Now, do you really need the insulated version? Particularly, you know, they want to charge you $100 for the 10 degree version. And how much is that really keeping in? I think in all the pictures that I've seen, there is some drafts, or I should say there are some drafts that can kind of come in on these corners over here. So, um, and in particular too, like your head's not going to be cinched around this thing. So I'm not completely sold on the insulated version of this sheet. And it also adds some weight as well. Um, definitely go with a 25 inch, not a 20 inch. And they have a couple of different colors there too. Um, another thing to note about their sheet here, as you can probably tell by zooming in is that, um, it's only a half sheet. So it only goes onto your upper torso. I'm fine with that. So, you know, unless you're, you're kind of, uh, you know, going to bed in your skivvies here, then I don't think you necessarily are in your undies. You're not going to necessarily notice the difference below you, but you know, particularly if your arms are a little bit more exposed, 
exposed, you will feel the difference with the sheet on uh, the upper portion of your torso there. Okay, um, so we talked about the price points. We talked about the weights here. Again, this is 800 filled down, 20D version for the light bed. Um, we're not going to get we'll, – we'll hold off to the pads for the pads until uh, the very end here. Let's go to the UL version, as they say here, coming soon. And the next thing that we can dive into here with this is the specs for this guy here. Now, if you remember the weight of the total system of the other one for all of the lower options, or I should say the lowest weight options, I think it came in, what was it, like 23.1 ounces, something like that. This one here, and you're going to be, you know, you'll see it with the price points here. You're going to be paying a, a much higher penny for this, um, and you're only really saving probably it seems like it's less than four ounces here less than a quarter of a pound so um again they're using a higher fill power 900 fill power they're using a 10d instead of the 20d on the light bed so um, i think i do have a couple of quilts that are 10d i'm not super worried about 10d i would be worried about seven denier um but 10 seems to be okay if you're a little bit lighter on your gear if you're harder on your gear then you might want to opt for the 20d version um so here's some of the specs for the uh sheet as well as the quilt so for the regular it's one pound one ounce so about 17 ounces and then the uninsulated sheet and that's for the 20 inches 2.7 ounces again yeah i highly recommend getting a pad that's 25 inches wide so you're going to add 0.2 ounces for that and then obviously they have different specs for the 10 degree it's going to be a little bit warmer and uh, definitely a little bit heavier and probably more expensive as well did we get to the price points yet here we go <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, nothing is in stock as of right now. They had a couple of different color options, red and black, and this white and dark gray. 25 degree and 10 degree version 25 degree version 409 dollars and if i remember correctly iirc um the 20d version again was like 279 so this is what 130 dollars more for the same temperature rating and again under four ounces of savings so you can do the math on that one 10 degree goes all the way up to a staggering 579 dollars and you're getting up there with the premium quilts at that uh uh, price point there. So ultralight sheet here too, even for the uninsulated is 89 bucks, $149 for the 25 degree version and $179. That's like the price of an additional quilt just for the sheet. I think that's a little bit ridiculous and doesn't seem to be any kind of difference here for 20 or 25 inch, but, uh, insanely ridiculous in my opinion for the ultra light sheet and i'm trying to think i'm trying to see here um it's 2.9 for the 25 inch ultra light what was the other one let's go back real quick and see what the light sheet was i think it was like it was a 2.9 and this one's like 3.1 <laughs> for the uninsulated version let's scroll down here real quick to see, yeah, 3.1 for the 20 inch, so 3.4. So you're saving like a half of an ounce, but what was the price difference on that? It's like $59 as opposed to, I think the other one was, what was it, like 89 bucks? Let's scroll back down here. And see the price but yeah 89 uh, so saving 20 bucks and a half of an ounce only and then on the quilt so that's for the sheet and then for the quilt you're only saving uh less than well it's less than four ounces total right so 17 ounces versus what was the other one like 20 ounces so three ounces on the quilt and like a little bit uh around that one ounce mark savings on the sheet all right that's it for both the light and the UL versions. Let's finish it off here with their mattresses. And let's just go with the ultralight version because there's a couple of different versions between like their, their light version. I think they call it the Flex Air mattress versus the UL mattress. The only thing that I've heard of so far is that the Flex Air mattress, obviously it's going to be heavier. I'm not sure if it's um, any less expensive. It might be, but they have a stretchier material on the top for, you know, where their baffling is. 
um, compared to the UL version, but I've heard that you can't really tell the difference unless you're kind of going like, you know, skin contact to the top of the pad here. A couple of things to note about this pad here as well, as you can, you can probably tell there is a slight mummy cut to it. Um, they went with that quilted baffling pattern running in a diagonal formation here. I have heard from some of the early adopters and early users of this pad that their, um, their, um, intake valve and deflate valve here is really difficult to get out not this top piece but this red piece here to dump all the air i heard is really difficult to undo and that's you know kind of nitpicking a little bit but still nevertheless um, not the best their pump sack here that i've seen is not the biggest either um let's see if i can find the other picture yeah here it is um so this is the mattress to the right here and this is the pump sack that kind of unfurls so it's a pump sack and i think also the stuff sack combined sort of like what c to summit has done but i've used that for the c to summit etherlite xt and it took me like six six to eight bagfuls to pump up the uh the pad which is not one of the best pump sack systems that you can have but it'll still do the job a-okay one other thing that I want to mention here is the unique way that they went with their baffling system. So again, with the um, C to Summit Etherlite here, you might be thinking that these little dimples here run the same from the top to the bottom, but they actually don't. They ended up crisscrossing the material here. So the top dimples are offset compared to the bottom ones. So the bottom ones are going to be somewhere in this area where this, um, you know, cushion piece is compared to the top, which is which has the dimple over here. The reason why that's important is because you can actually increase the overall R value of the pad that way by not having these dimples run all the way through and kind of you know heated together that way that's the mistake that i think c to summit made and that's why their pads run a little bit colder so for their 20 by 72 inch 189 dollars 199 for a more standard 72 by 25 inch pad i usually like to go with a long and wide and that one is also 200 that's actually not bad i don't know if that's a typo or if it's just not pulling up for me but it's also saying 200 one thing i don't like about their site here is under the specif uh, specifications here the spec Next. They tell you the weight here. So here are the weights. You got anywhere from 17 ounces up to it looks like 23 ounces for the long and wide. They're saying R value of five. I, five. I've heard that this is actually closer to 4.8 rather than five. So uh, take that for what it is. Still going to get you down into those freezing temps. No problem. And then you can see the pack sizes here. They use a couple of sheets, I think, of Mylar to achieve their R value rating. I'm not sure if they're ASTM um, certified here. Um, usually they post that if they are. I'm not sure if they actually went through that testing. And they're using a 20D fabric here as well. So this kind of shows you the inside here of the layers and the overall feel. Uh, on the outside. So again, the Flex Air mattress is a little bit more stretchy and I think a little bit more soft to the touch um, and more expensive too. I wasn't expecting that being that it's probably heavier. Um, and what else? Uh, the one thing, yeah, like I said, uh, and I, I didn't think I follow, I don't think I followed through, but the one thing that they don't show you here is it is a mummy cut, but they don't tell you what the length is, um, from the shoulders down to the feet. So they tell you that it, you know, can, it can be up to 25 inches wide, but what is it down by the feet? It doesn't look like it's that aggressive of a taper. So I'm going to guess only maybe a few inches have kind of come off there. So anywhere from probably 22 to 23 inches at the foot end. So, um, um, that's actually really good. Um, it means that it's it's not going to fall off that much and make you feel like you're going to fall off the mattress at night, particularly if you're a side and stomach sleeper. So it's not that bad. All right. So I think that's going to round it up here. I don't want to drone on too long. I can go on for days with this stuff because I'm a huge gear nerd here. But uh, let's wrap this one up here and uh, pop myself back on screen. How's it going? Um, so what do I think here? What are my thoughts on this one here? Um, it's just like most other ultralight um, gear that you can buy out there, right? Um, there is an insane jump in price for something that is not going to save you that much weight. So I'm actually really impressed more so with their light system rather than their ultralight system. Charging that premium 
for, you know, again, saving, what is it like a half an ounce or so, or just under an ounce for that top sheet, and then only saving an additional few ounces for the ultralight um, quilt, I don't think justifies charging hundreds of dollars extra for it. Now, if you combine all of the other stuff together, uh, minus the pillow, right, the uninsulated sheet, and then the 25 degree um, uh pad there. Oh, is that the gesture? Did I just have the thumbs up gesture on screen? Um, hopefully I can get rid of that and post. <laughs> but who cares? We might have to leave it in there. But I think that um, I'm actually more impressed with their light bed system. So putting all this stuff together here, um, you've got somewhere around $200 for the 25 degree quilt, maybe a little bit under $180. Um, 60 bucks for the sheet, I think is a little bit expensive. I'm not too thrilled with the hood system either. I did a, a, a recent, like what would be my perfect quilt system. And a lot of it was kind of drawn from this system, but I don't think you need that hood piece in there. Um, and I've heard that it doesn't clip all the way around. Um, it, it has a, a strap that clips around the pad for the majority of the sheet, but the hood kind of flaps a little bit and is not securely laid down. So 60 bucks for that, I think is a little bit expensive, but they're right there for the quilt and it's a system, right? The quilt clips into the sheet and you can't mix and match those with other quilts that you might have. So, um, I definitely think that that is a worthwhile system them to try and eliminate drafts, right? And because of the overall weight of it only being, you know, at the lighter end for just a light bed, never mind the UL version of being about 23 ounces, that's actually very competitive for a really good, like, enclosed system to eliminate drafts for a quilt system. Particularly, again, if you toss and turn a lot like I do at night, then this is definitely something that you might want to take a look at. And not only that but their pad also seems to be very competitive uh, not only price point but also weight the price point is a little bit more expensive at around two hundred dollars you're getting up to that like sea to summit and thermo rest category there but i think here it is definitely going to be one of the more comfortable pads due to that baffling system i can attest to that with my sea to summit pad and this looks pretty similar there and it has a ridiculously high r value as well one of the things that i'd like to see in the future for this company is making a warmer system. So instead of like a 25 degree, maybe jumping that up to like a 40 degree bag and then making a summer rated pad as well, shaving some more of those ounces off, getting rid of some of that insulation and dropping it down from like a 4.8 to like a two or two and a half R value, something like that. And then hopefully cutting off the price a little bit as well for that warmer rated system. Would really like to see that. But overall, is this a worthwhile buy? I think for the light system, not the UL system, yeah, I think it is. I think it is actually a legit system. I'll give it my stamp of approval for right now, but uh, I don't have it. I don't own it. If you're thinking about picking this up, let me know in the comments down below um, what your thoughts are on this system. Are you interested uh, on picking it up? because I definitely see this system becoming very popular in the near future. Um, I'm a bit of a Nostradamus, so I can kind of see these trends here, and I definitely see this one blowing up. And this is actually one of the worthwhile trends to be able to blow up in the space. So definitely give this one a look and consider it. The only other drawbacks that I can foresee, again, not having owned this, is the overall quality. Is it going to degrade or is it going to fall apart? Is the stitching? solid on the quilts, things of that nature, um, you know, are the seams solid on the pad or is it just going to fall apart? Things like that. Basically just like QC quality control and just durability over time. That's the only like downsides that I can see potentially for this company. And one of the main reasons why I made this video as well, real quick to kind of like round out my final thoughts is because I wanted to um, do a speculation nation kind of video and to mostly say that I've already got my gear and it works pretty well for me. So to invest in this system above and beyond what I already have, unless I were to sell the stuff that I already have, um, is not necessary for me to do. So I don't see myself 
picking up this system anytime in the near future, but it's not because it's not a worthwhile buy. It's just because I'm already kind of good with what I've got. But if you're new into backpacking and you've been having some iffy night's sleep out there uh, in the backcountry, definitely give this a look because it locks you down on the pad and uh, seems to be quite comfortable and can get you down to some pretty low temperatures. But I think that's going to do it. I'll wrap this one up. Thank you so much for listening to me ramble on for the last uh, half hour or so. Really appreciate you guys. Again, drop some comments down below. This one's probably not going to be a premiere. It's just going to be a pre-recorded uh, release on my channel and as a podcast here on YouTube. But uh, thanks again so much for watching, everyone. And I'll see you on the next one.